It works. The Nintendo Switch that we tore down and the Joy-Con, which was really the nightmare to put back together, and the dock are all functional. So with that, we were able to go forth and do some thermal benchmarking and noise level benchmarking on the Switch, which uses about a 25 millimeter fan, 24 to 25. Uh, so we've got some thermal and noise analysis on this. It's a bit of a fun side project. No frame rate stuff as of yet, maybe in the future at some point. But before getting to the Switch, this content is brought to you by EVGA and their 1080 Ti FTW3 ICX card that's coming out soon. EVGA's 1080 Ti FTW3 uses thermistors placed all over the board to provide a reading on VRM and VRAM performance, useful for lowering overall noise output of the GPU fan. Learn more in the link in the description below. The Nintendo Shield uses a modified Maxwell SoC from Nvidia. It has some modifications in theory from Nintendo. We don't know exactly what those are, but it is a Maxwell SoC. Because it's a Maxwell SoC and because we're running on a super lockdown OS, thank you Nintendo, we have no real way of monitoring anything that's going on in the system. That means for any measurement of temperature, of frequency, frame rate, anything like that. We need external tools, software, hardware, otherwise. Uh, so for the thermal measurements on this, we're using thermocouples. I've explained these several times before in videos on the channel, but you can check the link in the description below for the article version of this video where we explain testing methodology. In addition to those thermocouples for the temperature readings, we're using a, a noise meter, just a dB meter, to measure the noise output of the fan as it ramps into a heavier workload. So we're able to plot temperature versus time and versus noise, which is interesting because we can see how the fan handles those heavier workloads considering we have no other way to read the fan tack. We have no read to re way to read the GPU clock rate or anything like that. For today's testing, we decided to look at thermal performance versus fan speed and match that against heuristics for frame rate. And by that, I basically mean observation because again, there are no frame rate monitoring tools that are public without making our own. For thermals, we're using those thermocouples attached to the top center of the SoC die and to the top center of the memory module closest to the USB port in the switch, the USB Type-C port. Those thermocouples only give us the case temperature of the die or the memory module casing, so we don't have a proper junction temperature as of now, which is really the interesting one, but we can look at the case temperature and still figure out if there's a throttle point based on the numbers it outputs and the sort of observation of frame rate within the game. In this case, that would be Legend of Zelda. We do know that the Tegra X1, this is the X1, not the Nintendo modified one, will operate at higher clock speeds when under a juncture temperature of 70C, and it drops about 6% when under or between 70 and 90C, and then reaches TJ Maxx somewhere around 105C, depending on which specific implementation you have. We're not sure how comparable the Switch SoC is in regard to these temperatures, but it's probably not all that different. Still, we're working with what is effectively a T case measurement, not a T junction measurement, so do keep that in mind. Now again, for full testing methodology, check the link in the description below. That'll talk about how the thermocouples are set up and the positioning of the noise meter and things like that. The frequency spectrum analysis is not something we do a whole lot of. So it's not as scientifically defined as the other processes in this testing, like the thermal measurements, but hopefully it will give a baseline as to what type of frequency is emitted from the fan. It is kind of shrill. Uh, so that's the best we've got for you. If you have suggestions on improving frequency spectrum analysis in the future, post them below, because this is something that I've been looking into getting more involved with in the future for PC components. Let's start with just the temperatures, then look at noise, and then plot them against one another. This chart shows the switch from initial boot through gameplay in Breath of the Wild, and the big dip around the 1200 second mark is when we were forced into the inventory menu by a prompt, which immediately drives temperature down about 9 Celsius in some cases. The menu and tutorial interrupts help the switch recover its temperature to some extent, and this can be seen when observing fan noise versus on-screen action as well. For the temperature chart, red represents the memory temperature, and that is again the module located closest to the Type-C port, and orange represents the SOC temperature. There is one other memory package on the switch, but we're only measuring that one closest to the USB Type-C slot. At boot, temperatures are expectedly close to our ambient temperature of roughly 28 Celsius throughout this test. As we launch and load the game, temperatures rise until they hit about 57 Celsius, on both measured devices and then drop with each menu or prompt or interrupt. It's not until around the 1600 second mark in this chart that the switch starts dithering around where we assume its maximum temperature spec is, 
which is triggered most consistently by engaging in combat with multiple enemies concurrently. The SOC drives up to around 59 Celsius, and each time we hit that 59 to 60 C effective case temperature, we were observing a frame rate reduction or stutter in gameplay and combat. It seems that the switch is oscillating its clock between maximum boost and some lower value when attempting to impose thermal constraints, though we don't know precisely what temperature in terms of junction this constraint would start existing, because again, we don't have a junction measurement and we have no access to official white papers. Given that this is just a package reading, 59C is actually pretty high. Junction temperature would be a good bit higher than this, if not significantly higher. And let's look now at DBA output standalone over a shorter period of time for a baseline of the fan noise. Here we're seeing the decibel output increase as load ramps, with dips corresponding again with loading screens or menu pop-ups, and just for the record, the device was muted for this, Towards seconds 400 to 500, we're near multiple other actors in game who are driving up the fan RPM. DBA output peaks at around 33 to 35 dBA when under heavier loads, including those combat workloads. And this is about the noise output of our case test bench PC when in the fractal defined C that we're currently testing and soon reviewing. So in terms of comparing it to your PC, it's really not that loud. In terms of raw DBA output, this is completely bearable, especially assuming you're setting up the console at a TV where you're probably five to 10 feet away and you've likely got game audio playing. These things will completely obfuscate the noise. In handheld mode though, the noise becomes a bit more noticeable, but that's mostly because it's spitting it into your face out of the back of the unit. And this is also true for temperature though, depending on where your head is, you might not actually feel that. The type of noise produced by the switch is of a high frequency nature, generally producing an annoying whine that's particularly heavy in the 1400 hertz, sometimes 400, 600 hertz range, depending on just how fast the fan's going. This isn't a perfect test environment as stated, we're not using an anechoic chamber or anything like that, but we're still able to log the tone output by the switch fan with relative accuracy. Here's a sample of what that fan sounds like. Let's look at the temperatures versus the noise plotted against one another. This chart shows how the temperature and noise ramp up alongside the other. Fan noise, and therefore fan RPM, climbs steadily as SOC and memory temperature increase. This chart is cropped into an earlier part of the test, so we're only maxing out at around 57C instead of the 59C max temperature reading that we had. And we're able to see that the DBA output remains pretty much in a bearable range of 33 to 35 DBA. And again, considering you'll have volume and probably distance, that's really nothing to get mad about. What is annoying is the higher pitched frequency if you're close enough to hear it or if you're particularly sensitive to those frequencies. What this mostly shows is that there seems to be some sort of clock management going on based on thermals, and that's again without a hard measurement for frame rate, but we can observe gameplay and see very clear stutters or frame dips, as many other people will tell you in playing Breath of the Wild on the Switch particularly. We can observe those frame anomalies or poor performance periods and plot that versus the temperature, and generally, with our thermocouple hitting 59C, which really who knows what the junction temperature is at that effective case temperature, but with our thermocouple hitting and maintaining at that temperature output, it would seem that's about when the clock starts to either throttle or there's something going on within the frequency and boosting functionality to prohibit a runaway thermal scenario or start triggering other thermal trip points. In the case of the switch, seeing those lower dips in frame rate correspond with the 59C temperature would lead us to believe that in theory there's some sort of clock reduction. That's not necessarily the only reason you would have those poor performance periods, but uh, it could just be poor optimization, it could be too many polys and too much geometry on the scene at once, but generally it is during those heavy combat periods. One way to validate this theory would be to improve cooling, so that's an option. Uh, but for now, in the immediate future, we have a few new case reviews coming out this week. There will be a 1700X review on the website only. No video for that, so you have to go to the website today for that review. It will be posted around the same time as this video, give or take a few hours. Overall, though, the switch, uh, for noise output, not so bad. DBA is okay. Temperature is a bit warm. Uh, definitely approaching either some kind of throttle temperature, or if not that, just the game is way too much for the SOC to handle in those heavy load combat scenarios, particularly with the more 
uh, geometrically complex mobs. But overall, that's what we've got for you for the Switch for thermal and noise analysis. I wish we could do more, but based on the limited tools available, that is to say, strictly hardware solutions, no software solutions, that's the best that we can do today. So thank you for watching. Help us out on patreon.com slash gamersnexus if you like this type of reporting. It is definitely a bit unique for this one. It was a fun project. Gamersnexus.net for the full article or for the R7 1700X review if you prefer that. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.